high, high volume, preferably in a residential area. out there in the world sphere to you the individual as part of this collective welcome to the old Mazar Chin 5.0 with your brief but very concise host Will the Alternative is from Sports Throw do a little intro show thing on Lingman Jeans so you know a quick order coming up and the last two wherefores alright so you saw from Dwayne Darnan the ultimate sports fan the old Mazar mascot and a few of the old Mazar house cheerleaders from our Pi Kappa Alpha references sorry Pikes this our generation had our act together more back 20 years ago. None of that sort of stuff going on in fraternities, at least to the U of U. That's no more fraternity references. All right, as usual, a little preview of what's coming up. Flip order wise, we're back in bracketology a little bit. It's going to be a thing coming up in the next couple of previews. This is all from the Elite Eight. Sweet 16, it's too much to cover. Gen 5.0 takes a lot more putting together. So, rematch Arizona, Wisconsin. Um, Unlike last year, I think Wisconsin looked out. This year, watch out, UK, given the Notre Dame game. And Quickie Sport Ranch. Good twin? Not so good twin in terms of, like, off-putting fans who aren't boy, diehard UK. Yeah, you of you. Recently. Uh, what am I trying to think of here? Uh, anywho, yeah, Gen 5.0. I'll come to that in a moment. Keep bogans. You were lucky I blew my ankle. National Championship game, I was going to be the off guard. Anyway, Jet 5.0, get to bring you more content. Less show in your face type deal, but I still get to indemnify the OMSR position. What in Helsinki does that mean? Roll, wax off, wax on. It's like the third man on points, commentator wise, or the fourth is the base bait, or the case may be. Sitting down here, low profile. Give you a little commentary on what's coming up. Keep it short and brief, but. You know, kind of a sport rant within a sport rant without being too uh, long-winded. That's kind of the jam of this new format, and I feel you know, somewhat inclined after all I did put it together. So, do -do 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 -do. and we're off. Little uh, vignette put together, all the ESPN. Some from CBS, but. I mean, ESPN is somewhat restricted in what they're able to show. The NCAA got kind of fanatic about. Get to Eddie Holland from Florida. Remember that great uh, comeback, Western Kentucky? It was who was it? Prime Minister uh, then came with President Kentucky. Uh, it was a playing round. That was an amazing game. I showed like six minutes of it. Granted, it was all together, but... Um, yeah. They literally had a connection fit. They like tried to double ding me on it, the NCAA, because T3 Media, the media arm, as its name implies, also tried to get it on the ass. So double fucking dirt. Pardon my French. Oops. Try to keep it family friendly here in the Omazar. Uh, try to get it on the ass too. You know, it's not easy to do this with this freaking Southern California heat, I'm telling you. You know, it's still the end of March, on my reckoning, it's 90 freaking degrees today. Anyway, back to basketball. Yeah, end of the game here. Mm. Have to wonder if he was available over last year in the National Championship game, remember? Injured, got out, it's the car Johnson all the way. Um, I don't know. Not the biggest Kentucky booster boys you might have imagined. I blew up my ankle to you of you. Uh, was done before I could get started. Played with Andre and all them. National Championship game, 98. Teddy Smith, first year. It's hard for me to be objective, but I think I do. Um, it was thrilling to be part of it. 
it lived up to the hype. We're extremely So that would have to be like before Diggers, we were really Digger around Phelps' time. Beating them, and I thought we displayed that. But I think you got to give them credit. And I just wanted to go out there and be aggressive, you know, impact the game anyway. I mean, that's before my time. Um, but you know, he's not just about me. My young 40s. So I was not watching college basketball. You know, everybody had a so. part of this game. Everybody did something, uh, you know, good. Oh, you, you, you guys, you know, with your um, smartphones and all that nowadays, you'd be glad you missed out on this. Terrible day. Sorry. We were very confident. It's a moment. That's all good. Fashion. Yeah. You know, we played such a great schedule and played so many hard games and good teams. I think if well, the interesting thing was back in bracket, bracket, you'll see it come up. I don't want to spoil it for you, but this was foreshadowed uh, by we Coach Brady um, in Bracketology. We were a little tired at so the I end. went back in the archives and found that for you. How do you beat Kentucky? Um, well, they just sort of like give you a blueprint. Our guys play a lot, and uh, their length at times shrinks the court, and it just makes it a little difficult. And it did there a couple possessions at the end of the game. Well, you know, Coach Bray talking about the last three possessions. Uh, Notre Dame over three from the floor with a turnover in their last three possessions. He said that they have gotten a little tired. And Frank, that's like the story of the year for Notre Dame. They just wear on you. Maybe just took them a little. Yeah, they could have used this year. Yeah, well, think, well, you guys remember that, that two, three years ago, six, but, you know, ten, six, nine, uh, power four, right? Twenty-four, twelve, something like that. African American, bro, came out early. At the end. They spread you out. They get, they get easy baskets around the rim and. Of the 26 field goals tonight, layups on or dunks on 20 of them. I thought their game plan was phenomenal. And even Kentucky's length was challenged tonight because Notre Dame was able to spread the floor and get to the back. Well, and you talk about spreading the floor. And basically what we saw tonight, similar to what we saw actually with Billy Donovan and his game plan against Kentucky, trying to spread out the floor, get them those side ball screens, ball screens up top, cutting. Uh, he played a UCLA, by the way. The back so, yeah, he Notre recently Dame joined the ESPN. Play-by-play, uh, play or uh, color analysis, like four or five years ago. Yeah, it happened a couple of times this year. I suggested that, you know, somebody was going to maybe get beyond that close shave and draw some blood. Didn't happen. like number four come out to Paul to Billy. UCLA was like number two. It was like in the top five matchups. What happened to Tamu after that? I've only heard about it in a while. And other than that, she's a team from like six, seven years ago and you fall. Um, man, last two, three years had their chances. But they just didn't execute down the stretch. And as we saw tonight, in all of these games, there's one common story, Coach, that when they get their backs are against the wall, their defense is what's tightened up. I like the Mike Ray plan. You've got to play the low post guys man to man, straight up. You do not need to double. You do not need to sink. Because you know what? You stay home on the post and stay home on the perimeter. Now you take away those inside-out threes, and also you're in a position to have a body on a guy so you can block him out and keep him off the glass. I think rhythm and now there was time. Yeah, I'm going to do like a best-of compilation really from the first weekend because obviously it when it gets really shortened, like the, the tag team broadcasting um, teams, their CBS, not as much material to cover. So most of the, the, the one-liners from the week, first weekend, I'll do that all together. Jay Will, the only one who's even remotely close with this practice. So we'll pull that up. Yeah, Michigan State. All the way, baby. The question for Arizona will be, can they score? But I think Elliot Pitts and Gabe York can provide that shooting spark off the bench. And, and T.J. McConnell's a, a, a tough player, and he can be a guy that can take care of the basketball and lead the Wildcats. Best you guard know, came out of Duke. Sorry, so Kyrie Irving fans, you know, Jay Will. Study this and now, pull it by that. Well, he's one his career. Yeah. Things just happen. Nice guy. Yeah. You know, and he played for Duke. You know, there's another story going back to UNLV. I won't get into it, but likable guy. He get caught up with basketball personas and hold it against him because they're all just people, right? You know, like him on the court. What is that? We'll take a uh, quickie sport right out of the segment while I roll through some of these graphics. These are the back and forth Kentucky and Wisconsin. 
Uh, the Harrison twins, good twin, not so good twin. I'm just going to keep it short and brief with that. You'll hear it coming up. You know, Andrew's sort of, you know, even killed, grounded, going with the flow. Aaron, it's a very subtle difference, but it definitely manifests itself on the court. And he's the dude who's always mixing it up. Yeah, the start went after last year. Aaron, run your mouth off, and uh, Bo Ryan means like foolish a couple of times. All right. Chris Zion is coming up. I'm out of here. Wax on. Thanks for watching. It'll silly be wise while you're out to celebrate the final four. Alcohol and sports. They are joined at the hip. was averaging 54 points a game coming into this game. Today they scored 64. And I got to tell you, Arizona had no answers. I, this was as good a second half of basketball as anybody has played in this entire tournament. If you're Arizona, Chris, and you put five in double figures, and you shoot 56% from the field, and you make 28 of 30 free throws, I think you're going to feel good about winning this game. And Talk about second halves for both of these teams, Wisconsin and Kentucky. The Badgers, 15 of 19 from the floor. Kentucky, 15 of 20. Each had a perfect shooting high score. Sam Decker, 6 for 6. Scored 20 in the second half. Later in the evening, it was Carl Anthony Towns, 8 for 8, 17. And each team closed hard. Wisconsin made 11 of its final 13 shots. Kentucky made their last nine, so it sets up only the third ever rematch of teams in the final four year over year. Now let's look ahead with Wisconsin Josh Johnson. Last year, it, it was a great feeling getting the final four. It was almost like, you know, we were on top of the world. And this year is, you know, we kind of got the attitude of, like, what's next type thing. Um, I don't know. It's, just, it's, a, it's a little different feeling. Uh, we know we got more to accomplish. We've obviously had a really good year thus far, but... Um, we have bigger goals and, and stuff on, on our mind. Last year, a lot of times we said, why not us? And uh, this year, it's trying to make them believe again. And um, I think we've done it pretty well so far. I mean, it's a blessing. Um, I'm going to go down there and try to focus and try to win two games. Exactly. Yeah, exactly what you said. Um, we're definitely not finished, and we, we still can get better. Um, with two more games left in the season, we, we have places to improve, and, and we will improve this weekend and go down there a different team. Carolina has been there more often. Tar Heels have reached 18 final fours. Dick Vitale joins us once again, and Dick, we talk about Kentucky, I mean, daily, and for good reason, but boy, this game was amazing. Uh, just give me your thoughts on it. Well, I'll tell you one thing, Chris. I should be used to say survive in advance. Did they survive in advance? But what about a salute and a tip of the hat for the kids from Kentucky for keeping their poise? Down six. Then they're down 61. I believe it was 63-61 at the time when a big three by Aaron Harrison. Unbelievable. He did that.
last year against Wisconsin, against Michigan, and against Wichita State when they were undefeated at the end of the game. And then his brother goes to the free throw line, makes two big free throws. At the end, we almost had drama galore. You talk about the miracle of ice. We almost had the magic of a hard one. Can you imagine if Grant shot went in at the end? What a tremendous college game. This is why I've said once, I said it twice, and I'll say it again. This college basketball March Madness is the best three weeks of any sporting event. Talk World Series, talk Super Bowl, talk anything you want. Nothing captivates America with the drama and the unbelievable passion and the emotion that these kids 